I now call on Neil Bebby with up to eight minutes. Thank you, President Officer. Um, I think it's clear from the contributions we've had this morning that there is little doubt we can and should do more to promote language learning in our schools, and I think it's been a constructive debate this morning. As my colleague Neil Finlay said earlier, Labour therefore welcomes the report from the Languages Working Group, which makes a number of positive recommendations. Uh, we know from a recent survey that has been mentioned that nearly all pupils from secondary schools in many European countries learn two or more foreign languages, while more than half of the senior secondary pupils in the UK do not study a foreign language at all. As Neil Finlay, Stuart McMillan and other members have pointed out, uh, language learning is life-enhancing, opening up uh, possibilities not available to those restricted uh, to the knowledge of just one language. Um, Claudia Beamish, uh, Lee MacArthur and others mentioned the economic case for language learning. As we know, the report estimates that there has been around half a billion pound cost to the Scottish economy because of the decline in language learning. So the motivation for improvement from both a cultural and economic perspective is clear. Many members uh, took the opportunity to recognise the dedication and commitment of modern languages uh, teachers and assistants up and down the country. Uh, I was pleased that the Working Group report acknowledged there is considerable innovative practice in relation to the teaching of languages. Um, while the 1 plus 2 policy laid out by the Working Group is to be welcomed, an increased uh, language learning is, of course, a good uh, and ambitious idea. Um, as uh, Neil Finlay, Kezia Dugdale, uh, Liz Smith and Lee MacArthur have stated, there are clear and obvious concerns surrounding its proposed implementation. There is universal recognition that developing language skills from an early age is best supported by well-trained teachers and language assistants. Yet, as many of my Labour colleagues and others have said, the numbers of both have reduced significantly since 2007. The report states that foreign language assistants in primary schools and secondary schools will have a key role to play in the successful implementation of a 1 plus 2 policy. However, as we know from members who have raised it in this debate, there were only 59 foreign language assistants um, this year, down from almost 300 in 2005-06. The report clearly states um, that this ambitious goal will only be achieved, uh, achievable with the right resources. And it is obvious that the Scottish Government must take action to address this decline if we avoid to seeing another strategy that sounds great on paper but fails to deliver on the ground. It is estimated that Council funding for foreign languages would have to double or possibly even treble in order to make this policy a reality in our schools. I would therefore welcome more detail from the Minister um, on how the Government intends to fund this initiative. He mentioned the figure of £4 million, and we look forward to seeing detail on what that £4 million is for and what that £4 million uh, will provide. It is important to remember that while the 1 plus 2 model of language learning in primary schools is to be welcomed, it is not enough in itself, and the Languages Working Group uh, report makes a number of key points and recommendations. As Neil Finlay mentioned in his opening remarks, there is also an issue about uh, placing an emphasis on learning additional languages from primary one. While there is no requirement for secondary pupils to study an additional language beyond a certain age, it is no longer part of the core curriculum. As uh, Margaret McCulloch, Hans Ala Malik uh, and many others uh, made the point, we also need to tap into the many international language, languages that are already spoken um, by, by children and young people in our schools. Uh, we must also look, to, uh, look at how to enhance partnership working between primary and secondary schools to ensure continuity of learning. The Working Group's report points to this, and research carried out by the Sc Scotland's National Centre for Languages indicates that up to one third of primary schools who responded have no regular language links with secondary schools in their areas. Perhaps the most worrying part of uh, this report was the recognition of a significant decline in the number of languages taken forward to SQA uh, certificates. I do not believe this is just an issue of take-up. Uh, to believe that, I think, would be to blame pupils' motivations. I believe this is part, possibly part of a worrying trend of high school pupils unable to choose hires and advanced hires they want to choose at their local school. 
I'm aware of at least one local authority where the overall number of hires and advanced hires languages and other subjects um, has, it, taught in schools has fallen. So it's vital that this is part of any audit. I would also suggest that the government carry out a similar audit to see if the general number of hires and advanced hires is reducing in schools in the other 31 uh, authorities to ascertain whether our young people are getting the choices locally they deserve. As many members have mentioned, um, the reality is that 75 per cent of the world's population do not speak English, and we should give consideration to learning the languages of countries whose economies will undoubtedly play a stronger role uh, on the world stage in the future. Claudia Mimish uh, mentioned China, and Brazil is obviously another example, but so too is Russia and Eastern Europe. I think it is important that we recognise that although the working group did not set a specific hierarchy of languages to be learned by pupils, they did note a strong case to be made for languages such as Portuguese, um, Arabic um, and Russian, as well as other Eastern European languages, including Slavonic languages. I note part five of the report details the working group's recommendations that the government should engage with higher education to look at the implications of the report for that sector and for students. I was pleased to see the suggestion that universities should look to expand the number of languages offered there to take, account, take into account uh, of a future increase in the number of languages taught in schools and the anticipated increase through time of people studying to a higher level and beyond. On this point, presiding officer, the Scottish Government therefore needs to be serious about supporting the teaching of languages at Scottish universities. And I know Sandra uh, White raised the issue of the Public Petitions Committee um, looking at a petition in the name of Dr Jan Kulik, a senior lecturer in uh, Czech studies at the University of Glasgow, uh, and, and the petition calling for the Scottish Parliament to protect lesser taught languages at our universities. Um, the petitioners, I believe, are rightly concerned that a lack of targeted funding for lesser taught languages will mean that Scotland is at risk of losing much of the provision of teaching uh, lesser taught languages. Um, the petition seeks support from the Scottish Government for the University of Glasgow's unique languages based programme in Czech, Polish uh, and Slavonic studies, as well as Latvian, Estonian and Hungarian. Once lost, the uh, existing expertise will not be easy to regain, and I hope the Government will give uh, its, uh, this petition serious consideration. Presiding officer, the Labour Party is committed to providing uh, opportunities for young people across Scotland. Members have given numerous examples this morning of how language learning can help in doing this and provide significant cultural and economic benefits. It is vital, therefore, that any policy is realistic and takes into account the challenges faced by schools and education authorities. The one plus two policy must be fully resourced to allow well-trained teachers and language assistants to help children develop language skills from an early age. We need partnership working between primary and secondary schools, which must be enhanced, and action must be taken to address the decline in languages courses being offered in secondary schools. And support must be given to higher education institutions providing strategically and economically important but vulnerable language courses. Increased language learning is a good idea, but the challenge, as this report states, we need the right approach and the right resource to make it achievable. <coughs> Many thanks.